Lauren Green was a highly respected actor whose talent and charisma made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. He was known for his commanding presence on stage and screen and his ability to bring depth and nuance to every role he played. With a career that spanned several decades, Green left an indelible mark on the world of acting and his contributions continue to be celebrated by fans and critics alike. Whether portraying a stoic patriarch, a wise mentor, or a complex antagonist, Lauren Green's performance were always captivating and memorable. Lauren Green, a Canadian actor who would later become a renowned figure in the entertainment industry, was born in Ottawa, Ontario on February 12, 1915. His parents, Dora and Daniel Green, were Russian Jewish immigrants who settled in Canada. At birth, Lorne was named Lion Hyman Green, though it is unclear when he began using Lorne or when he added an E to his surname. As he grew up, Lorne attended Queen's University in Kingston, where he developed an interest in broadcasting for the campus radio station, Canadian Forces Radio and Television. Despite studying chemical engineering, Lorne realized that his true passion lay in acting. He made a difficult decision to give up on a career in engineering to pursue his dream of becoming an actor. Lorne Green's journey as an actor and broadcaster began when he studied acting at New York's Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater. After completing his training, he returned to Canada in 1939 and soon found himself serving as a flying officer in the Royal Canadian Air Force during World War II. Despite the challenges of wartime service, Lorne never lost sight of his passion for acting. While studying at Queen's University, he had already begun his career in drama by serving as the drama instructor at Camp Arrowan, a summer camp in Algonquin Park, Ontario. After graduation, Lorne joined the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation as a radio broadcaster. His deep, resonant voice quickly made him a favorite among listeners, and he became known as the Voice of Canada. However, due to his somber duty of announcing the list of soldiers who had been killed in the war, some listeners began referring to him as the Voice of Doom. Lorne Green's talent as a broadcaster was not limited to news reading. During his time at the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, he also lent his distinctive voice to narrate documentaries produced by the National Film Board of Canada. These included Churchill's Island in 1941, and fight in Norway in 1943. In addition to his broadcasting work, Lorne also had a passion for teaching. In 1945, he opened the Academy of Radio Arts in Toronto, which provided training for writers, actors, directors, and production personnel. The school produced many successful alumni, including James Duhan of Star Trek fame, television and film actor Leslie Nielsen, and television actor and writer Gordy Tapp. Despite his success in broadcasting and teaching, Lorne never lost his love for acting. In the 1950s, he began to make appearances on live television shows. He even took on challenging roles such as the title role in a one-hour adaptation of Shakespeare's Othello in 1953 and the rather unexpected casting of Ludwig van Beethoven in an episode of the televised version of You Are There in 1955. Lorne Green closed his Academy of Radio Arts in 1952 and relocated to the United States. There, he caught the attention of Catherine Cornell, who cast him twice in her Broadway production. In 1953, he was cast in the Prescott Proposals and The Dark Light Enough, a verse drama by Christopher Fry. In the same year, Green started appearing in isolated episodes on live television. He continued to make waves in the entertainment industry and was featured in the 1957 American drama film Peyton Place. He also landed the lead role in the British-produced half-hour television series Sailor of Fortune, which was syndicated throughout the United States. Green had an affinity for the Western genre and starred in two Western films, The Hard Man in 1957 and The Last of the Fast Guns in 1958. In addition to his acting work, he was a talented musician and released several albums throughout his career. Some of his notable albums include Welcome to Ponderosa in 1964, a collection of songs from the television series Bonanza, and Young at Heart in 1965. Green's diverse talents and dedication to his craft made him a beloved and respected figure in the entertainment industry. 
1964, he achieved a number one single on the music charts with his spoken word ballad, Ringo, which referred to the real-life Old West outlaw, Johnny Ringo. Another song of his, Saga of the Ponderosa, which detailed the Cartwright's founding of the famous ranch, also received a lot of playtimes. Green played the role of Ben Cartwright in the television series Bonanza, which premiered on National Broadcasting Company in 1959 and continued for 14 seasons till 1973, making Lorne a household name. During the 1960s, he capitalized on his image as Ben Cartwright by recording several albums of country, western, and folk songs. After the cancellation of Bonanza in 1973, Green joined Ben Murphy in the American broadcasting company crime drama, Griff, about a Los Angeles police officer who retires to become a private detective. The show failed to gain sufficient ratings and was canceled after 13 episodes. Green subsequently hosted the syndicated nature documentary series, Last of the Wild, from 1974 to 1975. In the 1977 miniseries, Roots, he played the first master of Kunta Kinte, John Reynolds. Lorne Green had a long and varied career with many memorable roles and accomplishments. In the 1970s, he was famous for his work as a spokesman for Alpo Beef Chunks dog food commercials. But he was also well known for his acting work, particularly his role as Commander Adama in the science fiction television series Battlestar Galactica. This show ran from 1978 to 1979 and Green's performance was praised by many fans. Green played another father figure in the 1981 series Cold Red, where he portrayed a fire department chief who commanded his children as subordinates. This role showed his range as an actor, and he was praised for his work on the show. He was also featured in an episode of Highway to Heaven and in a two-part episode of Vegas. In the 1980s, Green shifted his focus to the cause of wildlife and environmental issues. He hosted and narrated nature series like Lorne Green's New Wilderness, which promoted environmental issues and educated viewers about the natural world. His passion for this cause was clear in his work, and he became a respected advocate for wildlife and environmental conservation. Lorne Green was more than just a prolific actor. He was also a co-founder of Toronto's Academy of Radio Arts. The Academy, originally called the Lorne Green School of Broadcasting, was just one of many contributions Green made to the entertainment industry throughout his long career. In addition to his work at the Academy, Green was a well-known television personality, having co-hosted the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on National Broadcasting Company for nearly a decade. He also appeared in the home box office mockumentary, The Canadian Conspiracy, which explored the supposed subversion of the United States by Canadian-born media personalities. Green's personal life was just as interesting as his professional career. He was married twice, first to Rita Hands of Toronto in 1938. The couple had twins, Charles Green and Belinda Susan Green, who were born in 1945. Unfortunately, the couple divorced in 1960. Green then married Nancy Dill in 1961 and remained married to her until his death. Together they had a daughter named Gillian Dania Green. With his two marriages and children, Lorne Green's family life was as dynamic as his varied career. In 1960, he built a replica of the Bonanza set house, the Ponderosa II house in Mesa, Arizona, which is now listed in the Mesa Historic Property Register. Lorne Green's contributions to the performing arts and the community were recognized with various awards and honors. He was made an Officer of the Order of Canada in 1969 and was awarded an Honorary Doctor of Laws degree by his alma mater, Queen's University, in 1971. In 1987, he received the Earl Grey Award for Lifetime Achievement at the Canadian Gemini Awards. He also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 1559 North Vine Street. Sadly, on September 11th, 1987, Lorne Green passed away at the age of 72 due to complications from pneumonia following ulcer surgery in Santa Monica, California. He was interred at Hillside Memorial Park Cemetery in Culver City. Despite his passing, Lorne Green's legacy continues to live on and his contributions to the entertainment industry and society as a whole will never be forgotten. 
Goodbye and rest in peace, Lorne Green.